So there's a lot to cover in chapter 11, but it's all conceptually very easy. Communication serves four major functions with a group or an organization. It controls, it motivates, it serves for emotional expression and information. Usually when we think about uh, communication, we think just about information, but it does all those other things as well. This is a simple communication model. A sender will send messages through a channel to a receiver and then get feedback. In the middle of that, there's noise uh, getting in the way, the message is being encoded and decoded, and so you're seeing all these processes play out. But we don't think in those terms. You just simply listen to what I'm saying, I, the sender, and you receive it, and then you think through it and perhaps respond back to me. And it's, it's a, a process that we do without even thinking. Downward communication is very simple. It flows down to a lower level, say from a manager to subordinates, uh, to assign goals, provide instructions, uh, communicate, provide feedback, those kind of things. Now, um, the important thing about downward communication is to know that it's not just downward communication. It has to be reciprocal. If it is not reciprocal, then you're going to have problems. Upward communication um, communicates up the chain from the subordinate to that subordinate's manager. Okay, so it communicates. Uh, now, the way that the book talks about it, if you're trying to communicate upward, communicate in headlines. Give them what they need to know, not everything that they need to know um, or everything that is to be known. Support your headlines with actionable items. Hey, this is what's going on, and this is how I think we can approach it. So, because that manager has a lot going on, and you need to be aware of that. Prepare an agenda and make sure that you have your boss's attention at the time when you're trying to make changes or, or bring something forward. But make sure you're communicating in such a way that it's going to be well received by the boss because the boss is probably busier than you are. Downward communication flows down to a lower level and upward communication flows up to a higher level. But again, upward communication should be providing feedback to higher ups just like downward communication should be. Upward communication will be informing them of progress and relaying problems. And let me just add this. If you are not gaining problems, if you're not hearing about problems from people below you, you're doing something wrong. Either something is going perfectly or they don't trust you and they're not listening. We'll talk about trust uh, to a large degree in the next lecture. Lateral communication is simple. It's just reaching out both directions and looking at peers and, and talking to peers and finding out what they need and, and uh, swapping information with peers. Now, there's a number of ways that we can think about um, how we interact, and there are a few models. So, for example, the chain is one of the more common ones. And so in a chain, think about like little kids playing telephone, and it can be accurate. It doesn't have to be distorted like little kids playing telephone, but one talks to another, talks to another, talks to another, talks to another. It may be useful depending on what you're trying to do, but it may not be optimal. Then you have other options like the wheel. The wheel is very common in an organization where everybody talks to one particular person, usually the boss. Now the problem with that is that the boss can become a bottleneck. And so while everybody else is waiting for an answer, um, then that boss on, tire, on top is just tired. I mean, he that boss has to deal with everybody's request and prioritize and think through it. And so they become a bottleneck and that's not optimal many times. Another way of dealing with this is an all-channel network where everybody can talk to everybody else and to the degree that the chain of command is not such that you have to go to your manager, to his manager, to talk to this manager who talks back down to another manager, to another manager, to the degree that you don't have those impediments, everybody can communicate and that facilitates group information and sharing of information. If speed is your highest criteria, then you probably want to use a, um, you know, all channel is going to be fast. If accuracy is your issue, then things like um, the chain and the ne uh, and the network wheel are going to be high for accuracy. If you're really focused on a leader, then you're going to be looking at, um, at network uh, wheel. If you're if what you're most concerned with is member satisfaction and um, you know organizational productivity because they're happy and satisfied at work, then you're probably looking at an all-channel network. That's going to be more important.
Now let's talk about a few other things. The grapevine, the grapevine is the organization's informal network. And sometimes you go, well, you can't just, you can't just believe the rumors that are on the grapevine. No, rumors are actually more true when in a condition, in a organization where there's a condition of low trust. So to the degree that we, that, that information is not put out and there's low trust, rumors emerge, um, to combat the ambiguity. So in a high trust organization where uh, the management is transparent, the grapevine will be less accurate, but it, in a low trust environment, it's gonna actually be more accurate. Comparing types of uh, communication, oral communication, that's just simply speaking, written communication, writing, nonverbal, how we talk, how we communicate. I know in class when I'm asking a question and students are like, you know, buried in their book, like they really are intently trying to read it all of a sudden. Um, no, they're not trying to read it all of a sudden. That's non-verbally telling me, please don't call on me, please don't call on me, please don't call on me. Physical distance means different things in different cultures. So and we're used to one cultural way of doing things in a Western America, Canada, a Western European kind of way. But cultural norms in the Middle East or South America are very, very different than what they are in our context. Finally, uh, I, I want to talk about information richness. So you choose a channel um, the infor based on how how much information richness, richness do you need? So if you're in a low, uh, if you have low channel richness, or if that's all that you need, it's fine to send out a memo or some kind of uh, um, uh, e email or something along those lines. That that's fine. If you need high channel richness or you're going to have lots of feedback, get off your butt and go meet with that person. If you if you're not local, video conference with that person. The more high um, channel richness you need, the more critical it is to use face to face and video conference. Don't I mean the telephone's really not that good when you need the highest channel richness. Video conference or get off your butt and go see somebody. Okay, so. There are some barriers to effective communication, things like filtering, selective perception, and things that we talked about in previous chapters. What you say is not necessarily what someone hears. That is filtered by their perception of you. And so you need to understand that. Their emotions can get in the way. Information overload can get in the way. Silence, right? When somebody, when you think that you've presented something and everybody agrees and there's just silence, that's not necessarily agreement. In a, in a uh, organization, uh, where there's not high trust, silence does not mean agreement. It very often means disagreement, but I'm not able to express that or I'm not willing to express that because I don't trust you. So you have to be very careful. Uh, implications for manager. So remember your communication mode will determine your communication effectiveness, which mode of communication you choose. Um, remember that written communication creates misunderstandings. It creates more misunderstandings generally than oral communication because you, you mean to write something. And I've done this a, a number of times where I wrote something, say, into a syllabus, and I think it's perfectly clear, but students interpret it differently. And when they do, I go, oh, yeah, I guess you could have seen it that way. So that, that can happen. Remember also that written communication creates a record. So don't flame somebody when you get mad and send them an email because now you just created a record that you are hot headed and you know, you're just going to respond that way. Communicate in person where possible. Um, it's just, it, it just smooths things. If you can go and communicate with the person one-to-one, -one, get the feedback, get the information richness, that kind of thing. That's very important. And then you also want to remember um, that communication barriers are, are just there between gender and culture and the type of message that you're sending. They, they do exist. Um, it's, it's just part of where you are. Implications for managers also mean things like this. Look, the scripture says that the tongue is a fire, right? It's an evil that can't be contained. The scriptures also tell us that a gentle tongue can break a bone. So, you know, what you do with it, it can be either good or bad. You have to rein that in. And, and what you say, you know, out of the, out of the uh, abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The scripture tells us all these things. And so you have to think in terms of why is what's being said being said? I mean, um, is there something else going on? Is there deep-seated frustration or resentment? If so, what's causing it? How to, and, and unpack those kinds of questions rather than just deal with what's going on at the surface. Okay, that's a lot to digest for this chapter. Thank you for your time and we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.